Hello, I'm Dustin Abbott from Thousand Word Images by Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to talk to you about a filter solution for the Rokinon, Samyang, Bauer, Wallamex, maybe a few other names, a 14mm f2.8 lens. I've previously reviewed this lens on my website, and after reviewing it, it very quickly was added to my own personal kit because it is it's an incredibly sharp lens and it pr provides a, a tremendous amount of detail, great color saturation. It's a fantastic landscape lens. However, most landscape photographers like the ability to shape light through the use of filters. And because of the design of this particular lens, most notably the bulbous front element, it meant that traditional filters just weren't going to work. There have been a few uh, solutions that have come along um, or have been adapted to this particular lens. None of them particularly cheap and uh, not always effective either. Just this uh, year, Samyang has come out with a filter holder system designed for the 14 millimeter lens. So today is both a, a how-to on how to use this particular filter holder as well as um, a review of the holder itself. Now, the first thing you need to know is that this process is not necessarily straightforward or easy. I would encourage you to run through this a few times should you purchase this at home before you try to do it in the field because it is a bit complicated because this is not a lens design that, that naturally takes to that. The filter holder itself comes in a few pieces. There is a plastic piece here that we're going to apply in a moment. The filter holder itself, all of which is, is nicely designed, it's got a flocked interior like uh, some lens hoods do, of a, almost like velvet-like material. And then also there are, um, along here, there are little bronze screws that allow you to tighten the pressure um, on the actual filter uh, filters themselves. Let me take you step by step on how to actually apply this. It does come with instructions, but I was, the first time I, I went through, I, I thought that I had something completely wrong because it just required far more pressure. And that's the first thing I want to share with you is that just expect there to be much more resistance involved in this process than what you would anticipate. First, obviously taking off the lens uh, cover. And so this first piece is very similar shaped to the actual lens hood on the lens. And it, it goes along with that. However, to slide that over that, you have to often um, press in at certain points or stretch the, there's a little bit of give to the plastic material to make it stretch out to fit over because it's not necessarily an easy or a natural fit initially. And then once you have that lined up with the hood, with some pressure you can push it into where it exactly mirrors that. However, at the rear of this, it has the clips that fit into this. And so it has to be done with the lens um, unattached to the camera itself. And so that means that it might be better to do before you actually go into the field. Once you do that, then with some pressure you can click and you do have to push pretty hard to pop that into the assembly. Now the good news is that once you actually have it popped into the assembly, it's designed to where it can rotate and so you can go from a horizontal to um, a vertical position or a landscape to portrait orientation uh, quite simply when that. And only then can you then take the actual lens itself and uh, mount it onto your camera body. Now note that just through the nature of the way that the lens is designed, there's not really any leftover barrel for you to grip while you're doing this. And so recognize this is a manual focus lens and whatever focus settings you have are almost invariably going to have been changed as you apply that. And so you need to kind of make sure that you look again at your focus and perhaps your aperture on the aperture ring. Now, this actual uh, filter holder itself is not overly expensive. However, for whatever reason, they're difficult to, to track down. In fact, when I spoke to um, the, the importer here in Canada for this line, they were unable to get the product and there was no intention to import it. I actually ended up purchasing my set off of eBay. And that being said, while I was able to get the, uh, uh, along with this are the filters that go for it, it's 160 series. Um, they're filters made by Kokum. I was able to get the graduated MND filter, which is a very, very um, necessary filter for use in the field if you're doing landscaping to help to balance exposure with both your foreground and the sky. This is a graduated ND filter that um, helps you to establish where your skyline is going to be and to use it appropriately to get a more balanced exposure. 
These filters are not cheap and uh, expect to pay well over $100 a piece for them. I was able to find this graduated ND, however, I've been looking for the solid um, ND filter to also use to get longer exposures. To this point, I've been unable to find one, or at least at one at any kind of reasonable price to import, and so my hunt continues, although I have developed a, uh, a homemade solution that does seem to be working. The filters themselves, there's room in this filter holder to actually mount two filters at the same time. My hope, of course, is to use both the solid ND filter along with the graduated ND filter and to get long exposures and a balanced sky and foreground. And so it can be easily side into place and then you can lock it down if you so desire to hold that. And of course, once uh, the filter holder is in place, it's very easy to rotate it and depending on how you have it mounted on a tripod or hand holding, depending on that. And so as far as the result, I've been very, very pleased. Um, it allows to go even an already dynamic lens to produce even more dynamic images. And uh, I'll give you a few examples here towards the conclusion. And so as far as the actual use and the construction, I'm very pleased with it. It's not necessarily cheap. And as you can see, it's somewhat inelegant perhaps, but often such solutions uh, made by Lee and other companies for other um, great wide angle lenses are by necessity similar to this. And so it's obviously not for everyone, but if you are looking to uh, continue to use your 14 millimeter f2.8 lens in the field and get even better results, I recommend this as a great solution and one I think that is probably more elegant believe it or not, than the other solutions previously because it is designed for this lens in particular. And so if you would like more information and also some more sample photos, you can take a look at DustinAbbott.net and, uh, and there will be links below on that. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.